Hey folks, today we're out at the ACO Spring Kickoff Car Show and it's featuring European marks. And we are with Steve, who has an absolutely beautiful car uh, that we're gonna show you. And Steve, why don't you introduce yourself and introduce your car and give us some history about okay. you and the car. Okay, so I'm Steve Worthington and uh, I'm a bit of a Jag guy. I do have 11 of them. <laughs> oh, including this one. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is a 1967 420G, okay. which um, is the successor to the Jaguar Mark 10. Okay. It was rebadged by Jaguar. Um, there's a lot of confusion between 420s and 420Gs. The 420 looks very much like this car but is smaller and it only has two carbs. So it's, uh, it'll look like this but it's actually a smaller car all, all around. Um, so this car has an interesting history. I found this car um, the back end of last year, I was visiting my daughter in Richmond, Virginia, and I saw this car sitting out, and it was looking a little, a little tired, and so I tried to contact the owner to see if he was interested in selling it, and he was. It hadn't run for a number of years. It had belonged to his father and been left to him, so I convinced him to sell it to me for the right price. And. Uh, since then, I've done a lot of work to the car mechanically, although not, not a lot of work cosmetically. Um, but it's very much in original condition, and right now I'm tempted to leave it that way. Well, you were but, saying that, and Nathan, if you want to swing around, you were saying that because you can see that the the, uh, the upper part has the yeah. original patina, yeah. and I did question you about the bottom. You said it is the same color combo, but it, the bottom part had been repainted. Yeah, the bottom has been repainted possibly, I don't know, 10 to 15 years ago, according to the person I bought it from. Okay. Um, but the top, as I say, is the, is the original paint. So this car actually has an interesting history because it's not a federal spec car. So it was originally sold in Belgium to somebody that lived in, um, in, in Germany. And uh, it was then shipped back to Henleys of London to be federalized and shipped to Virginia in 1972. Wow. And uh, we have the original documentation for the, the federalization. Um, it was registered in the UK and the license plate that you see there, which is an F registration license plate, is the original license plate from the UK registration. Uh, F was a 1967 license plate. I was going to ask you about that, what the nomenclature of the, the license plates means. So back and we, in the, you got a picture of that, Nathan, we can show that as well. Back in the, back in the 60s, um, they changed license plate numbers, the, the last digit of the license plate number every year. In fact, 67 was an interesting year because in 67 has two numbers, both E and F because in 67 they determined they wanted to change the point in the year when they changed the license plates. Gotcha. So it wasn't January, it was moved to the middle of the year So then sometime. you had to have so two different have numbers two for that, that year. year. Okay. So 67 you'll see an E and an F. Um, so tell me, you've got 11 Jags. Yeah. Why? Oh. What do they mean to you? Well, I mean, you were... it's, 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 I grew up in the UK, right? right? So I grew up in the UK in the 60s and 70s. Right. And in the same way that a lot of Americans love American muscle car from that generation, yep. I love Jags. You this know, is the this, car you grew up with, these, you these saw, the, you yeah, aspired these to? These are the cars that I wanted when I okay. was, you know. Right. So you bought 11 of them? Uh, yeah, just, they just sort of come and go. <laughs> you know? I, I, I actually used to have a 1966 Mark 10, which is the forerunner of this car. Okay. Um, I got rid of that a few years ago, and I wanted to try to find another one. And I now, this, this one. is, uh, Nathan, If you, I don't know if you've got an overall length of it, but yeah, this I is do. a very, very large car. Yeah. Uh, where you think most cars from the UK are uh, smaller, more compact. I, you know, Mini comes to mind. Uh, Mini probably comes to about here, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, so but this is the biggest sedan Jaguar ever built. Biggest they ever built, yeah. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So back in the day, this would have been a fairly prominent person that drove, or someone very well off, yeah. that would have driven this vehicle. They, they were an expensive car, you know, okay. um, in comparison to maybe an American muscle car in those days was what, $2,500, $3,000. Right. This was running seven, eight thousand dollars um, but it also was way ahead of its time. Right. Um, independent um, rear suspension, yeah. disc brakes all around. You know, um, this would not only go fast in the straight line, it would go fast around the corner. 
which and it handles very very well for a car of its size. Right, because you were saying it's probably about two ton yeah. and, it's, and it's weight broken. Yeah. And this is all nice and solid. And then we opened the door just a few minutes ago. It, it the, the the thunk that it made. It sounded like a bank vault closing. And you want to tell us a little bit about some of the interior and um, the design of it? I love the yeah. chrome, the beautiful yeah. chrome. Have you ever done anything to the chrome nope, surrounds? No, nope. this is this is all. It's that's, that's amazingly beautiful. Um, you know, it's it's all wood. Um, some of the wood is is veneer is peeling a little bit but generally speaking it's all wood. It's interesting this car versus the Mark 10 has a little clock in the middle and the vinyl on either side. That, those vinyl pads were sort of a concession to safety. Oh. Oh, I'm not quite sure how, <laughs> how much that would really work but you can tell the difference between a Mark 10 and a 420G if you look at the, the clock in the middle. That will show you the difference. Um, and you were saying then uh, the size of the engine all this? It's a 4.2 liter engine. It's got triple carbs. Um, it's a straight six and it was 265 horsepower when new. And I gotta say that's that's really really cool on the hood because it's almost like it's counterweighted where it just uh, came off really easy. Listen to that start up. Just that easy. Just just, just like, like that. that. And you've not really done a lot to um, the internals or you have? Did you said something about the carbs, right? Yeah, we rebuilt the carburetors and uh, and, and redid the valve timing. Okay. Um, that's all that's been done. So the tappets have been done and the, the carbs have been rebuilt, but otherwise the engine hasn't been touched. And it was interesting because I said it hadn't run for a number of years. Right. And once we got it back together, it started right up and really had to go very little. Now, do you do the work on it yourself? No. And, and um, it is, so you don't set the carbs I haven't, those time? I, I have done that in the past. Okay. This particular time around, I had uh, a guy called Jeff Flynn. Okay. He specializes in Jaguars. He's in St. Louis Park. I hear that's quite a chore to get all those. It is. It is. Lined it's in. Very difficult. But I have. Probably. I have done them in the past myself. Okay. It's, okay. Because there's um, nothing electronic on here. It's not no. a computer telling there's him what anything needs anyone, to do. Yeah. It's all manual. It's all manual. It's all mechanical. Yeah. Oh, and, uh, this is fantastic. You know, and this will cruise quite happily at 70 on the highway. Now, how often do you drive? Is this uh, one um, you just bring to the car show? Do you actually get? Do, do, is it kind it of a daily driver? No, not not daily necessarily daily. that I'll much. I'll take it out during the week and drive it sometimes. I'll take it out in the evening sometimes. Just take it for a drive. Okay. Yeah, but it's not something I drive every day. One thing you're telling me too, from the factory, this chrome strip would not have been here. So yeah. they would have married up those two colors. Yeah. So the colors actually are. And you've got the original color chart. I have the original. I have it right we here. We had. Yep. Yeah. So these are original factory colors. So the Willow British Racing Green over Willow Green was an, an original factory color. But you can tell that this has been done later because if it had come from the factory, it wouldn't have had the chrome strip. Right. When the two tone, two tone came from the factory, there was no chrome. The chrome was only on a single color. Okay. And we do have the uh, original Jaguar Heritage certificate here. Which oh. shows that it was British Racing Green. Oh, how about that? Yeah. So this is from Jaguar. The show. So this is actually and from Jaguar. This is actually from Jaguar. And okay. you see that it, if you look at the original descriptor, it's Lajig's The Hague Holland. So it, that shows that it, it how went, about that? went to Holland first. So, oh, yeah. Fantastic. Absolutely beautiful car. <laughs> Steve, thank you so much for sharing this with us. It's no problem. beautiful. I've, I've never seen one. It's it's such a huge car. Again, for the UK market, it's incredibly yeah. long. I love the nice flowing lines to it. It's just it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so okay. much for sharing your Thank car. You. Thank you Thanks. for sharing your story with us. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah. yeah.